Now, today, leading no campaigner Warren Mundine spoke at the National Press Club and he ran his harsh lines against The Voice. They're pretty deceptive lines. He goes on about the Uluru statement being 26 pages long, that ridiculous deception the opponents keep going on about. Mundine calls it a manifesto, a symbolic declaration of war. Now, this is just horribly divisive stuff too. Mundine says The Voice is racially divisive when race has always been in the Constitution and The Voice is designed to recognise Indigenous people for the first time and give them the basic right to have a say on issues that affect them, issues for which the Constitution gives special powers to the federal government. Now, as I've shown you before, Mundine used to support A Voice. You actually support a voice, don't you? Yeah, well, we, we broke bread just last night. The model that I'm looking at is that will come from the people on the ground, the traditional owner people who, who speak for country. It'll move up into the, into the national body and the, and the national body then can have these conversations in regard to this. But for whatever reason, he's changed his mind. He's allowed to do that. And he reckons there's no need to put a voice in the Constitution. If the purpose of the voice is to end disadvantage... It shouldn't be in the Constitution, because that's permanent. That says Indigenous Australians will always live in poverty, that we'll always need help, that we are destined for permanent disadvantage. Now, that was Mundine at the Press Club today, and that's another furphy often put up by the no side. They know it's wrong, but they keep pushing it. Canberra's powers over Indigenous affairs are already expressed through native title laws that apply to vast parts of the country and cultural heritage laws, not to mention other policies and programs and the Federal Department or the NIAA. So, obviously, long after Indigenous disadvantage is gone, if we should ever reach that happy day, then, of course, there are still matters to deal with affecting Indigenous people and Indigenous peoples alone. Now, Mundine also rightly pointed out that many Indigenous people overcome disadvantage. People like him, like Senator Nambajimpa Price, like Marcia Langton and, of course, countless others. But in telling his story, he reflects on laws that used to treat Indigenous people as second-class citizens. My father couldn't have a drink in a pub after cricket with his mates. His wages was taken by the government and he was paid an Aboriginal allowance. Aboriginals in New South Wales were subject to a 5pm curfew. My dad was arrested for breaking curfew uh, coming home after working late. It's pretty confronting, isn't it, to hear about this stuff. I've spoken to many other Indigenous friends about their lives on what were then called missions. All this happening in our lifetime. But this goes to the heart of one key rationale for The Voice. Now, the laws Mundine referred to would have been state laws, but Indigenous people deserve some protection, some guarantee that horrible policies and discrimination won't easily be imposed on them again. And The Voice does that to some degree. It has no power, but it must be heard. So Indigenous people would at least have the protection of officially being able to raise concerns or objections about such laws in the future. Indigenous Australians, in my view, deserve that at least. And let's finish on Mundine's prescription for what Indigenous Australians need. But if we really want to better the lives of our most disadvantaged Australians, we have no choice but to stay engaged for the long haul. Accountability, education, economic participation, social change, these are not complicated ideas but they require politi political will to, ensure, to, ins to, to happen. Absolutely right. Again, Indigenous people need to stay engaged for the long haul. They need to focus on accountability and push for better education and economic opportunities, and they need political will to make that happen. That, ladies and gentlemen, is another core argument for The Voice. The voice is the way to embed political engagement, to keep the focus on the crucial issues and to get more accountability. Because if Indigenous Australians promote the solutions, they'll own the results. The No campaign doesn't really have any strong arguments against the voice, but their scare campaign is working. There's no doubt about that. Poor fellow, my country.